Hello and welcome to the Street Crime Australia YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Today we're going to look at a legend in the Australian criminal underworld, Christopher Flannelly, or as some know him, Rentakill. Christopher Flannelly was a violent and dangerous hitman who had earned a fearsome reputation as a gun for hire and sometimes as a bodyguard in the Australian criminal underworld. Enjoying a short but very violent career in hired killing, Mr Flannelly grew to infamy due to his dealings with the controversial police figure Roger Rogerson. His involvement in the notorious Sydney gang wars of the 1980s and his protest over mistreatment by the guards whilst imprisoned in the now legendary H block at Melbourne's Pentridge Prison which led to a parliamentary inquiry. Christopher Flannelly was born in Brunswick, Victoria in 1948 and grew up poor, spending time in the boys' homes. Whilst his brother and sister focused on working hard and establishing themselves as upstanding members of their local community, Chris seemed to have more interest in entering the criminal fraternity. He graduated to his first criminal conviction in the same year he left school, when he was 14 years old. By the age of 17, he had racked up a string of charges, including breaking and entering, car thefts, possession of firearms, rape, assault on a police officer and at this age he was sentenced to 9 years in prison. It is possible that this early incarceration may have desensitized Mr Flannery from the suffering of others and instilled in him a distinctive mean streak. Inside H Division in Pentridge Prison, the high security wing of the jail which was reserved for offenders deemed too dangerous to mix with the general population. Mr Flannelly was repeatedly bashed and sodomised by both criminals he lived with and the guards whose presence was meant to ensure his protection. Clee, growing wary of such horrendous treatment, Mr Flannelly decided to place himself on hunger strike and draw attention to his plight behind bars. His actions eventually forced a parliamentary inquiry into the living conditions of prisoners in H-Block and as a result of the damning findings of this inquiry, a number of prison guards were forced into retirement. Mr Flannelly achieved an almost hero-like status among other prisoners for his actions. After being released from Pentridge Prison, Mr Flannelly and two accomplices were alleged to have committed an armed robbery on a David Jones store in Perth and were soon after arrested in Sydney by the infamous detective Sergeant Robert Rodinson. Mr Flannelly allegedly attempted to bribe Mr Rodinson in order to escape conviction but was extradited to Perth to face trial. Mr Flannelly was acquitted of the department store robbery only to be sentenced to his second major jail stint for an earlier committed rape in Victoria. It is possible that Mr Flannelly may have killed as many as 14 people by his own hand, but his first killing is widely thought to be that of the barrister Roger Anthony Wilson. Mr Wilson's body has never been recovered, but it would later be alleged by the police at Mr Flannelly's trial that Mr Wilson had been driving before being forced off the road, abducted and taken to Peckenham in Victoria. Mr Flannelly and two other men, Mark Alfred Clarkson and John Henry Williams, led Mr Wilson into the bushland and shot him, only for Mr Flannelly to fail to actually land the initial lethal gunshot. Mr Wilson allegedly tried to escape, blood pouring from his head wound, only to be followed by Mr Flannelly, who for the first time was able to reveal the full extent of his deadly capacity for rage by emptying the contents of his gun into Mr Wilson's head and back. In August 1980, the trio of Mr Flannelly, Mr Clarkson and Mr Williams were arrested by Victorian police and charged with Roger Wilson's murder. Mr Flannelly was acquitted of Mr Wilson's murder in October of the same year but as he left court he was swooped upon and arrested by detectives from New South Wales police for the murder of Raymond Francis Loxley. Mr Loxley, a Sydney brothel owner, had been murdered in 1979 in Menai. Mr Flannelly initially faced trial for Mr Loxley's murder in 1982. However, the jury was unable to reach a verdict and as a result, a retrial was scheduled for January of 1984. When returning to court to face his second murder trial, Mr Flannelly and his legal team were unhappy with the judge selected to preside over the case. A medical certificate for Mr Flannelly, which claimed he was unfit to face trial, was obtained from medical entrepreneur Jeffrey Edelstein and as a result Mr Flannelly was acquitted of Mr Loxley's murder. Mr Flannelly went to work in Sydney for club owner and alleged crime boss 
George Freeman as a bodyguard and standover man. The Sydney gang wars raging at the time meant that Mr. Flannelly was soon active again as a gun for hire. Mr. Flannelly had declared an alliance to Neddy Smith. However, when the gang wars began to approach any sort of peaceful resolution, Mr. Flannelly continuously proved a stumbling block to the negotiations due to his frequent displays of brutality malice and threat. In 1984, Mr. Flannelly had approached the infamous NSW detective Roger Rodinson in an attempt to help out a friend, Sydney criminal Alan Williams. Mr. Williams was set to face drug charges as a result of an ongoing undercover investigation being carried out by detective Michael McDurry. Mr. Flannelly approached Mr. Rodinson with a bribe to be forwarded to Mr. Durry in a hope that the drug charges against Mr. Williams could be made to disappear. Mr. Durry repeatedly refused the bribes, however, at which point Mr. Williams allegedly proposed to pay both Mr. Flannelly and Mr. Rogerson $50,000 each to murder McDurry. On June the 6th, McDurry was shot as a result of his incorruptibility and it is alleged that Mr. Flannelly was the gunman. Mr. Flannery was clearly developing into a liability for those all around him. His need for violence had developed into a fully overblown ego of a hardened criminal who believed himself above the law of the courts and the law of the streets. The ruthless actions of Christopher Flannelly will prove to have almost fatal consequences for both him and his family however, when in January 1985, an attempt was made on his life. As he and his wife were approaching their Sydney home on foot, an unknown gunman fired 30 automatic rifle shots at the couple at their home. Mr Flannelly was mildly injured in the attack and his paranoia was convinced that the shooting was ordered by rival gang figure Tom Domican. The attack on Mr. Flannelly would prove to be foreboding in things to come. It became clear that Mr. Flannelly had established himself a list of enemies which far outweighed the list of his murder victims. Not long after the attack on his family, Mr. Flannelly moved into the inner Sydney apartment which was ironically close to the CIB headquarters. On May the 9th, 1985, Mr. Flannelly received a phone call from his boss, George Freeman, asking for a meeting. Mr. Flannelly, in leaving for rendezvous, was unable to start his car. Mr. Flannelly contacted Mr. Freeman, who told him to catch a taxi. Mr. Flannery agreed, and after exiting the Connaught on Liverpool Street, he was never seen again. Claimed by former gang associate Neddy Smith that the police may be responsible for the disappearance of Christopher Flannelly. As Mr. Smith noted, Mr. Flannelly entered a police car with officers he knew on May the 9th. The police officers had allegedly offered to take Mr. Flannelly to meet with George Freeman. Christopher Flannelly's body has never been found, and in 1997, NSW state coroner Greg Glass found that Mr. Flannelly was murdered on or around May the 9th, 1985. Mr. Glass also inferred that the key to solving Christopher Flannelly's murder lay with Roger Rogerson. To this day, no one has ever been charged with Mr. Flannelly's murder. Thank you for joining us today. What are your opinions on the crimes committed by Mr. Flannelly? Do you believe he was took out by rival gang members? Or do you believe what the coroner Greg Glass says, that the key to solving Christopher Flannelly's murder lies with Roger Rogerson? Please let us know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to like and share. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see more Street Crime Australia content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell so you can join us on the next video. Thank you for joining us and until next time, stay safe.